Welcome everyone! This video is all about the Herbalist Challenge and we will go through the 10 of them as tedious as it is. The first challenge starts us easy by collecting six yarrow. You can find plenty of them around camp in chapter 2 and in the heartlands. And its red flowers makes it really easy to spot. Collect six of them and you're done. A ballast two will have you pick and eat four species of berry. Near Valentine is where you'll find some blackberry. And a bit further away, nearby, you'll find some raspberry. Note that if you haven't examined the plant already, you won't have the option to eat it straight away. So all you need to do is go to your satchel and eat them from there. Traveling to Emerald Station and heading northeast near the railroad band, you will find some evergreen huckleberry. One spot to find the last berry is north of Annesburg, near Willard's Rest. In the woods, you will find a wintergreen berry. And after eating it, that will be challenge 2 completed. For Herbalist 3, you will need to craft 7 items using Sage. For this one, we will also need some common bulrush that can be found near camp along the Dakota River. Combined with Sage, we'll use it to make potent oil stimulant. Make sure to collect at least 7 of them. You will also need seven sage that can be found in the woods area just northeast of Emerald Station. Once you collected all of the herbs, just set up camp to start crafting and choose the potent or stimulant. If your satchel isn't upgraded at that point, you will only be able to carry three horses stimulant at a time. So it's up to you to use them or discard them and continue crafting until you made seven of them. After crafting the last one, it's your challenge tree completed. Herbalis 4 is an easy one. Pick 5 mushrooms and feed them to your horse. For this one, we just need to go to Flatnet Station. In the pig pen, you will find some parasol mushroom. There probably won't be five there, but not far in the wood area, you will find some more. Once you got five of them, you then just need to feed them to your horse. And that will be challenge 4 done.
For Herbalist 5, you will need to craft 9 items with Indian Tobacco. You can find Indian Tobacco near camp in the woods at Diablo Ridge as well as the area near the Trapper in Beat Valley. You can easily find patches of tree plants in the location and all you need to do is collect 9 of them. Setting camp and crafting, we're going to choose the potent snake oil, the easiest item to craft with Indian tobacco. If your satchel isn't upgraded at that point too, you can just consume the snake oil directly or discard it. Craft 9 of them, and you're done. Herbalist 6 will have you pick 15 different species of herbs. This one is easy, any plant or mushroom counts. So all you need to do is walk around, spot some patches of plants in either eye, and collect 15 different ones. Some good locations are around camp, and in Bead Valley. But if you want more specific location, you can jump to the challenge nine in the timestamps put in the description below the video where all the plant locations are listed. Some foreshadowing here. Once you collected 15, that's your challenge sheets done. For Herbalist 7, you will have to craft and use five special miracle tonics. You can find the pamphlet Northeast in Bead Valley on a ledge you will find an abandoned camp with a lot of bugs contained in the pamphlet. You just need to read it so Archer can learn it. You can also buy the pamphlet at the fence for 6850. To craft the tonic, we will need 6 current, 6 yarrow, and 6 burdock root. Between camp and the Dakota River, you can easily find some yarrow. You can spot them easily with their red flowers. And not far along the river, you should find plenty of burdock root. Dark green leaves on one strong stem with purple flowers. Northeast of Elm Road Station, in the areas along the train track, is a good spot to find some current. Easy to spot as they look like a small tree with lime green leaves and golden orange berries. Note that to craft 5 special miracle tonics, you will need 30 of each plant, which can be a tedious process if you haven't upgraded your satchel, as it can only hold 10 of each plant to start with. Finding 30 of each plants also requires quite some walking around and going into either lie in the areas mentioned to collect them all. This challenge is a test of patience. Once you got them all, or enough to craft at least one tonic, all you need to do is set up camp, or go to the fire spot at the dance camp, select the special miracle tonic, craft it, and drink it five times. And you're done. Herbalist 8 will have you craft 6 poison weapons using Holy Under Sage. You can find Holy Under Sage quite easily along the Kamasa River in the bayous. You can spot them easily with their bright pink flowers and all you need to do is collect at least 6 of them. Next, 
we'll go to the mysterious hill home, northeast of Battery Station. In the Lord Bots near Sun Barrel, you will find a poison arrow pamphlet that you can read to learn. You can also buy it at the fence for 58 bots. Note that you will also need six flight feathers, easy to acquire by shooting and plucking any birds until you get them all. Then you'll just need to access the crafting tool from the weapon wheel. Select poison arrow and craft six of them to complete this challenge. Herbalist 9, pick one of each species of herb. I hope you're ready for this one. All the species and timestamp will be in the description below the video to make it easier. Note that there are 43 of them. I suggest you copy paste the list below and scratch them off as you go. The game won't tell you which one you picked and which ones are left. First, we'll go to Valentine. On the east side, you can find some creeping thyme, yarrow, raspberry, and wild carrots. West of Valentine, you can find some blackberry. Near the Lampany Burnt Village, you can find some oregano. Going to Owengila Lake, on its bank, you can find some burdock root and common bulrush. Going north of Wingila Lake near the Trapper, you can easily find some parasol mushroom and some wild mint. Not far north, you can find some wintergreen berry, hummingbird sage, and American ginseng. A bit north again, you can find our first orchid, the Lady Slipper Orchid, as well as some Ram's Head Mushroom. Going a bit east to the Bloodbone Forest, you can find some Babolet Mushroom. And in Beat Valley, you can find some Indian tobacco. East of Catfish Jackson, in Panther Territory, you can find some chanterelle. Going a bit north to Bulger Glade, 
you will find the night scented orchid. Going southeast of Shady Bear, that's where we'll find the ghost orchid and not far away from it, the clamshell orchid. Going to Prince and Crow near Kaliga Hall is where you will find the Lady of the Night Orchid. Nearby your edge is where you'll find a Spider Orchid, some Vanilla Flower and some Evergreen Otterberry. Near the Tamasa River is where you'll find some milkweed and some oleander sedge. Near Agan Orchards is where you can find the Rat Tail Orchid as well as the Queen's Orchid. In some island in Lagra is where you can find the Atuna Star Orchid. Going south of Canbrek Manor is where you can find the Cedar Orchid. Going north to Mossy Flats is where you can find a moccasin flower orchid. A bit north of Elysian Pool is where the sparrow egg orchid spawn. In the Roanoke Valley, you can easily find some golden current. An easy spot to find some Alaskan ginseng is at the abandoned trading post north of Annisburg. On the east side of Ocre's Run is where you can find the Dragon's Mouth Orchid. And just north of Ocre's Run is where you can find some Violet Snowdrop. East of the mysterious hill home is where you can find some English maze.
is a spoiler warning for you if you haven't completed Chapter 6 just yet. In Blackwater, you can find some prairie poppy pretty easily with the orange flowers. All around Armadillo, you can easily find some wild fever few. Near Fort Mercer, you can find red sage easily. North of Tumbleweed, near Daptove Bridge, you can find some desert sage with a purple flower. You can also find some black currant further east. Once you collected all the 43 species, that will be the Herbalist 9 completed. For the last challenge, you will need to season and cook all 11 types of seasonable meat. This time, the game gives you a list of all of them to try to progress, which is handy. Some of the meat can be acquired at a butcher, namely the venison, pork loin, and prime beef. But if you're something of a hunter yourself, we'll show you where to get them all. Heading to Copper's Hand Landing, south of Van Horn, you'll be able to find some pelican to get some exotic bird meat. You can easily get some big dead meat too in this area by hunting some gators. Going west towards the Blue Water Marsh, you can hunt some boar to get some pork loin. Alternatively, you can also get it from pigs at various farms in Valentine and Flatnet Station, for example. In the heartlands, you can find a small goat farm that will give you some grizzly mutton. Alternatively, you can find some goats and sheep at Emerald Ranch and Valentine too. Still in the heartlands, you can find a bison herd to get some prime beef trunk. And again, alternatively, you can get it from cows, bull, and otters from Emerald Ranch and Cromerity Dale, not far from there. To get some venison, all you need to do is hunt some deer or prone horn, and they are everywhere, so it should be an easy task. Same thing is to say for the turkeys that will give you the plump bird needed to the challenge. As well as the rabbit that will give you some game meat. All easily find in the heartlands and around Emerald Station. West of Rhodes, on the biggest island in Flat Iron Lake, near Clemens Point, is where you will find some Cuban land crab. Once collected, you just need to go to Yusacho, break it down to acquire the crustacean meat. Next stop, we'll go fishing on the stream just north of Owenjila Lake. There, with a cheese bed, you can fish some rock bass. Then, change your lure for a river lure until you catch a sockeye salmon. 
Going to your satchel, you can break down the salmon to get some succulent fish meat and the bass to get some flaky fish meat. The last thing we need now is some seasoning that can be found on the pans of Owingila Lake. Going around, you can collect some mint, thyme or oregano. You will need at least 11 to cook all of the meat. Once you have all the ingredients, all you need to do is set up camp and start cooking. All the 11 seasonable meat will give you the option to be seasoned with mint, thyme or oregano. Choose the one you prefer and start grilling all of them one by one, eating them or storing them as you see fit. Once you cook all of them, you will have completed the Herbalist Challenge. At the Trapper, you can now acquire the Herbalist Bundler for 27.23, the Herbalist Dumbbell for 24.53, the Herbalist Holster for 19.80, and the Herbalist Offhand Holster for 19.80. I hope that video has been useful and until next time, see ya!